can I complete State of Decay 2 Lethal Zone without ever stepping foot in base? No! Without base, I won't be able to craft anything including cures. And if you've seen any of my content previously, you'll know that's a bit of an issue. And probably what scientists would refer to as a super spreader. Without base, I won't have access to the supply locker, so I won't be able to store any of my loot. I will be fully reliant on my backpack and the boot space in whatever car I can find. I choose to start the game in Drucker County, seeing as you can get a guaranteed play cure in the hospital. And with that out of the way, let's meet our heroes. You've met this masked fella before, introducing Suggy, the bloke who had his face burned off by a load of fireworks. Suggy is joined by two pieces of cannon fodder he picked up along route, introducing Ryan and Woodward. Both of them pick simply because they're packing incredible immune systems. Now all I need to do is spawn in as the right character, as I can't swap unless we claim base. Oh, well, that's disappointing. That is disappointing. Well, it sucks, but it seems we can't complete State of Decay without ever using the base. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one. Nah, obviously I'm dicking about because that's like 75% of the brand. It takes another two attempts, but we do eventually spawn in as our hero. Yes, there we go. Look, we're Suggy. Third times I'll char, eh? Also get extremely lucky that the car spawns with a toolkit in. Oh, there's a blood feral up there already. Already there's a blood feral. Obviously I'm gonna avoid the plagued out crackhead, as the first thing on my to-do list is to climb a tall tower. And that's simply because I don't know this map very well, so I need to get a lay of the land. From up top I find a petrol station, so my next plan is to get some fuel so I can get the car up and running. Although technically I am using the trader boom, so I'm absolutely balling with influence. But as always, I decided with chat I wasn't allowed to call in everyone's favourite spiky muscle car until I had taken down at least one player car. So for now, I make my way back to the starter car with two cans of fuel. And as I'm running past, we've obviously got to deal with our first crackhead. But Suggy has gunslinger, get wrecked, you speedy bitch. I refuel the starter car, but decide not to use the toolkit for now. Also, just want to take a moment to say we're obviously not going to be able to complete the full legacy. And this challenge is just to see whether or not we can take down the 28 to 30 play carts in the lethal zone map. Which I suppose is a legacy in its own way, just not officially. And for no particular reason, I decided to start in the bottom left hand corner and just sort of work my way around like a clock face. But first I've obviously got to climb every ladder I come across. I decide the first heart I should tackle should be in this warehouse. So after parking it strategically near the window, I bust down the door and drop a roly poly. And hoping my cannon fodder will deal with the zombie hordes, I get busy beating that pulsating meat. The fodder actually do a great job of keeping the zombies off me. It was always going to be my own incompetence that lets me down in this challenge. I get too greedy while the heart's phasing and well, yeah. Not an ideal, not ideal, not ideal. Thankfully the hordes only seem to be attacking from the one side. But I do close the door on the opposite side just on the off chance and get back to the play cart while the fodder deal with the zombies. But I actually get the second phase finished with one swing of my heavy skillet. But unfortunately one of my guys get bit in the background. What a moron. Right, let's just burn them. Then one more swing ends the play cart. And seeing as my team have done such a good job of clearing out the zombies, I have plenty of time to do the loot in. I then want to check on the infection status of my boys. Woodward is a nice and casual 16%, which I actually think is pretty decent. Ryan, on the other hand, is basically halfway to an early grave. I store the fake AK I got from the heart in the boot and move on, still deciding to save that toolkit. Ooh. Ooh, yes, a bloater, bloater, bloater. Last, last thing we need right now. Last thing we need is a bloater. And then I can rock up to our second player cart. Thankfully, the building is as empty as my search history after I've had the house to myself for a couple of hours. That allows me to get off a very quick phase with the old frying pan before I duck inside the nearing bedroom. Again, I'm not using the stimula at the moment, but I will set it on fire. Just hope nothing comes through this window. Oh, look at that. It is coming through the window. I don't know about you, but I personally hate it when strangers come through my window. If you also hate it when strangers come through your window, whack a like on the video and subscribe. That's the second phase taken care of, and the final phase goes by just as easy when my boy's distracting all of the hordes. And I can once again collect some pretty decent loot. That's two arts taken care of, and I know what you're thinking, this isn't even a challenge, you fucking moron. Well that is all certainly about to change. I climb another tall ladder while my boys deal with the hordes below. I find another two play carts while scouting, but while I was busy sightseeing Ryan has contracted blood plague. I'm dying on my feet here. Well technically but you are sat in a car, maybe you should be a bit more grateful. My third and Ryan's final play cart is in this little cafe. And once again, thanks to the boys distracting the hordes, we destroy the play cart incredibly quickly. I then use a destroyed pickup from the parking lot as a makeshift supply locker to store all of my loot in. Then with three minutes still remaining of Ryan's life, I go searching for our fourth play cart. I find one in this tartan mart, so maybe I was exaggerating a bit earlier when I said Ryan only had one more heart in him. So I bash in the door, but there's five knobheads just chilling out. Well, unlucky son, cause Suggy's the fastest drawer in the West. And I don't mean 
me shit out with a pencil. We get the first phase and I execute the only zombie that could be asked to turn up. And seeing as Ryan is a dead man walking, I've already taken his gun off him. But what can I say? The lad really wants to get involved. How is he not dead yet? Fair play. Two zombies try getting through my back door, but it's no one's birthday, so I'm shutting that shit down immediately. One more power swing and the heart falls, and so does Ryan. Oh, there we go. <laughs> R.I.P. R.I.P. to Ryan. That poor bastard didn't stand a chance. Thankfully, Woodward is still standing strong. And I'm not saying that Sugi and Woodward are terrible mates, but they do leave Ryan's decaying corpse on the floor of that Tesco Express. The next play cart we come across is in an unfinished house. I obviously park it strategically, but that wasn't the reason I came into this area. You see, there's a water tower with a super long ladder I've just gotta climb. But unfortunately, I get distracted by chat who are congratulating me for hitting 100 likes on the live stream. Damn, 100? What have we got? Oh my god, yeah. Oh my god, no! No! Are you kidding me? Who'd have guessed my addiction to getting really high would be so bad for my health? Ah! Okay, that is not what we want, chat. That is not what we want. I got distracted by chat and we got bit. Look at that plague leader. We might have to go get that plague cure sooner than I expected. I climb and scout, but it's fair to say that high was ruined. Least of all, because there was actually only one more site to survey. This was a waste of time coming up here. Especially as Woodward has completely vanished. And I've seen all of the walking dead and that typically isn't a good sign. I probably should be looking for my mate, but instead I decide to be eat some strange meat. I know I will never get tired of reusing that joke. What can I say? I'm trying to save the planet recycling material one piece at a time. Surprisingly, I can get the second phase off and there's still no hordes to be seen. I head back to the car to regain my stamina and now slowly the hordes are starting to gather. Thankfully though, there's only two inside the building so I can finish off the play cart with one final swing. And after all the hard work is done, guess what? Woodward makes his return. I'm pretty sure we all know at least one lazy fucker like that in real life. I then try taking a second to sort out my inventory, which at the moment is being managed poorer than Manchester United. But all I can do is drop one bag of snacks before Woodward gets over the run. Well that's alright but I got a molly that'll sort you right out. And that's gained us two additional slots in my inventory. And there's only two things I want to fill that with. Pipe bombs and pistols baby. And after that we're ready to make a move. Although Ryan's infection status is up to 74%. And mine's not looking too great either. To be honest at this point I might be more infected than the bloody NPC. That's not great especially as one of my mods in chat has worked out that I statistically contract blood plague every five play cards. And we're on our way to numero six. Although I do once again pull over to get high as fuck, that turns out to be terrible news for Woodward who's up to 95% infected. It gets even worse when I get to the bottom of the ladder and there's so many knobheads just waiting for me. So I decide to whip out Gunslinger without taking a stim and that literally takes all of my breath away. Which isn't great for my longevity. Oh god, oh no, no! Uh, yeah, let's just go, let's go. Get in the car and go, my friend. Get in the car and go. Unfortunately, Woodward doesn't get in the car so I abandon him. He'll be fine. He'll catch up. But it seems in Draka County, Carmore always strikes those that deserve it. No! You kidding me? Get out the plate. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. This has gone absolutely abysmally. We have one choice right now. Uh... <laughs> minutes. What the fuck? Are you fucking kidding me? Once the cloud dissipates, I hobble back to the car. And no leeching bastard is gonna prevent me from my getaway. I simply refuse to let our boy Suggy die. We're not even an hour in. 45 minutes I've been live at this point, and so far we'd only managed five play cards. And what's worse, Alex is fucking right. Every five. Every five. I get plague. And when you're this close to death, you don't give a shit about roads. You'll turn your saloon car into a rock climbing beast. And you'll ignore any and all parking restrictions even in a hospital. You'll steal and rob and break whatever you need just to get your hands on some precious medicine. I have to get more of those. Well, that's the thing, Suggy, my friend. You're not going to be getting any more. Although, believe it or not, it is possible. I just need to get extremely lucky. I even need a medical trainer to spawn or a stranger with blood plague who's called in a supply drop. But both are very rare. So instead, I just call in the meat wagon. We also haven't had a confirmation of Woodward's status. So for now, we'll say he's missing in action. But if we're being realistic, there's no way he could have survived this long. Our next play cart is in this army and navy store. And it's got a bit of an awkward placement, but at least I can shoot it from the van if I need to. But for now, we do this the old-fashioned way. I as fuck on caffeine. Gratefully, I managed to get a phase off before the hordes catch up to me. And while it's spraying his juices, I take refuge on my van. And just when the night is darkest, guess who makes his return? Oh, look, there's my guy! Yeah, he's almost certainly dead. Well, he manages to wander around for another 20 seconds or so. But yeah, R.I.P. Woodward. We've also had our first feral spawn at the play cart. But I'm taking care of him from the roof of the van. And now it's time to get back in there. Unfortunately, though, 
though there's literally a shit ton of zombies, so I go for a cheeky wonder first, and try tricking them by going through the back door. But there's always at least one camping little bastard. But whatever, I get the second phase off, but unfortunately I'm not able to drop any of my explosives due to the massive crowds that gathered. And with them being that large, it's gonna be extremely difficult to get some serious damage on that player car. So I drop a despicable double roly-poly and climb onto a car on the car park opposite. And now with them all a bit more spread out, I can again run through the gaping back door and massively fuck shit up. I unfortunately don't have any time to do any searching and just focus on my escape. Which isn't as easy as you'd think while driving a massive van. But hey, at least I took down that play cart without even getting touched. But if I'm being honest, I'd really love a medikit. Well, there's two ways I know of for getting medikits. You can spend ages searching medical tents and doctor's surgeries, or get lucky as fuck with play cart loot. Well, I'm feeling like one lucky boy. I get the first phase with the heavy weapon, run around like a little pussy, then get myself caught in my own explosion. Oh god, okay, wait, yeah, that's not good. That's not a good sign, is it? But I managed to escape without being munched on, and even managed to burn down part of the horde that's chasing me. I then almost complete the second phase with a horde up my ass. No, no, dodge, 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 you silly fucker. What can I say? Still a speedy boy, no fuckers touching me, son. That is, of course, until they eventually do. Oh, no, 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 that's not good, that's not good. Also, forgot about my stamina, didn't I? And apparently, Suggy has completely forgotten how to climb on cars. That leads to another disastrous moment. Ah! No! Somehow I managed to get away, but things are looking proper shite right about now. Was not prepared for this chat. But thankfully one more hit is all I need. I manage a very rushed looting. In fact, it was so rushed I even forgot to pick up the gun. Then in an attempt to lose the hordes, I drop a frag. Then head back to the previous heart in order to loot it. And you'll be chuffed to know I finally find my medikit. And just like that, things aren't looking too bad anymore. Well, on to our next player card. I can successfully phase with the frying pan before unloading my sidearm from the roof of the van. Before going back inside and getting caught on my swing. Well, that could have gone better. Get away, get away, get away. I also, why have I not popped the st any, any stimulants? Am I a moron? I get the next phase sorted with a massive horde on my tail. But I can bash the B button to get through the hordes. And no, that is not the euphemism. Oh, okay. Catch it, catch your breath, catch your breath, catch your breath. It's all good, chat. We can't. So I pop a stim and get back in, but only manage a couple of hits before the horde catches up with me. I head outside and wait for them all to follow me. I can then run back in and finish it off before the horde catches me. My next plan is to head back to the pickup I stored shit in earlier, and I decide to take the van off road. Yeah, we might as well just jump off, why not? The only thing that could go wrong right now is a fucking bloater spawning right underneath me. But to be honest, I'd completely forgotten why it's stored in there. Nothing that's gonna help me out of this situation if we're being honest. So I do what I do best and call in the impaler, and it's probably time I adjusted my strategy for maybe the third time in my life I start creeping about, but unfortunately the back door is locked up tight. Then they start jumping through glass to get to me, so I suppose you could say stealth is well and truly out of the window, but with only a sliver until infection I'm breaking it. I start by whacking, dodging and exploding, I then put the remainder of my AR ammo into it. That gets it to phase and don't worry I've still got 13 of my sidearm ammo. Not that I need it when I'm carrying a massive frying pan. Well there's not really much more I can do other than just crack on. Anyway next up is an easy one inside this tartan mart. Well it would be easy if I had the ammo and explosives to kill it safely from the car, but I don't. I burst through the front doors not knowing exactly how many zombies are in there, and then immediately leave up the back. I then climb onto a car in the car park, and thin out a couple of the zombies with my fake AK. But unfortunately, disaster is never too far away. Oh, you are kidding me! Absolutely fucking not! How they got me from the roof of the car, I'll never know. But I refuse this to be how Suggy's story ends. He fights harder than he ever has, not worrying about his resource management. And after all of my explosives are used, I use the remainder of my side. Ammo. But that's still not enough, I've gotta get in there. Who'd have guessed a frying pan would be the most dangerous weapon in the zombie apocalypse? And as the sun starts to rise, we make our escape. But when you're merely seconds away from death and there is no cure, what exactly are you trying to escape from? Rest in peace, Suggy. <sighs> Rest in peace, my friend. You might think this is where the challenge is over, but there is another. A man so despicable he's literally unkillable. Dean the Great, the Unburned, the survivor of our solo run. And this time our heroes head to Trumbull Valley. And after a quick wardrobe change, no dicking about, I immediately call in the Impaler. And this time one of our cannon fodders have two cures and a coffee on them. I suppose we can just call that the moron's handicap. And thankfully the Impaler spawned right next to this broken down military truck, which was packing some great loot. My plan is to head to the northwest corner of the map so I can search that landmark station. Last time I played Trumbull on Lethal, I found a cure there. But first I decide to make the area nice and safe. I start by battering the nearby play cart with a baseball bat, while my two pieces of cannon fodder deal with the hordes. Although I'd probably say that 
they're not as heavily equipped as Ryan and Woodward, as one of them is literally using Dean Starshank launcher from the previous challenge. Anyway, the heart goes down nice and easily, but fodder 1 is already 56% infected, and cannon fodder 2 is even worse. At this rate, we'll be lucky if either of them survive the second player cart. Speaking of which, it's time for Cheese Central. Firstly, you open the door, then park very strategically. I can then get out in the safety of the shed, and not a single thing can touch me. However, the cannon fodder twins are very much left out in the elements, and I get the impression that one of them at least doesn't appreciate that very much. Oh my god, I'm being fragged by my own team, and it's coming through the walls as well. Thankfully, that doesn't even slow me down. I then rescue them both and take them to safety. Unfortunately, however, they have both contracted blood plague, and I do have two cures I got from the legacy character, so it only feels right to shoot them both in the back of the head. RIP cannon fodder 1 and 2, I very much thank you for your sacrifice. But karma very much strikes back when I don't find a cure at the research station, so I'm guessing that cure isn't a guaranteed spawn. Great. So next up is Baxter's Dentistry, and luckily enough there's nothing about, so that gives me plenty of time to get the first phase done with my stars and stripes spangled baseball bat. No! Why am I stuck? No! My only way out is the stuck radio command, but the damage has already been done. Why would you screw me like that game? Look, I'm already half the way to infection. Thankfully, it doesn't teleport me into a pack of 75 ferals. I immediately use the medikit I found in the military truck. I then frag the heart, which will hopefully take down some of the hordes, then get the second phase out of the way with a bat, and thankfully this time I'm actually able to escape. And while it's spraying its juices, I manage to drop another frag. I then loop around the back of the buildings, shoot the last remaining zombie, then batter and frag it, making it go down. That should help with the hordes. It did a little bit. Oh, it's dead. Okay, great. I then climb the nearby cell tower while I wait for the hordes to wander off. And from there, I find two awake play carts as well as a siege site. No idea what happened to a siege site when I've got no base or people in it. And sadly, we're probably not going to find out. Then thinking I'm safe, I once again get distracted by chat. To be more drunk, aim EOJ. Oh my god, how the fuck did you get up here? Well, I missed that in the latest patch notes. Imagine if one day, randomly, they just give zombies the ability to climb. But they don't tell anyone and I'm just casually in lethal zone getting chased by a triple pack of knobheads when I climb onto the roof of my impaler but the fuckers follow me on top. That would both be hilarious and terrifying in equal measure. Anyway, onto the next play cart and for this one I'm going for the whole slow the flow tactic. But that doesn't go too well on this attempt as Dean discovers the ability to levitate and I once again have to use the stuck command and this time I decide it would be best to go for the side door and with one of the entrances blocked I can take down the first phase before a single zombie can get in the room with me. I then unload my tommy gun because why the fuck wouldn't you? It's without a doubt the cool coolest weapon in the game. It does take all of my 45 caliber ammo, but I can take down the play cart before a single zombie enters my building, and I even have plenty of time to loot it. Now the zombies have finally caught up to me, but it's too late, son, adios. I get back to the impaler and reverse my way out, and this is where shit gets interesting. I drive past a siege site which is infested with a juggernaut, and that's basically right next door to my next play cart in this pronto gas station, so you might be able to work out how this one's gonna go. I still haven't found a heavy weapon, so I start by battering it with my baseball bat. That gets the first phase done done with, and while it's spraying its juices, I drop a molly and get out of there. At this point, several zombies have entered the forecourt, and once the heart stops spraying, I get back in there and start battering it, but there's a shit ton of the undead and I don't get that many hits in. I get outside and clear a few, before running back inside and completing the phase. Oh my god, the juggernaut's inside! How did he get inside? I throw myself out the window and burn anything that follows. He was inside, you've seen that, right? I'm not fucking- yeah, that juggernaut's inside. Apparently, this juggernaut's been on Weight Watchers as he's now able to walk through doorways, so I climb a ladder in the hope that he just fucks off somewhere. I do a bit of scouting and head back down, but it seems the juggernaut didn't get the memo, so I head back inside, this time closing the door behind me. I'm sure a flimsy piece of glass will easily stop that fat bastard. Look, he's, he's coming in again! So I head out the side and drop a molly behind me. Mm. Juggernauts are immune to fire. I know, I'm trying to kill the fucking play cart, you silly twat. Ignoring the jug still in the building, I head back inside and get a couple of more hits on the play cart. I'm so confused right now. How is that juggernaut fitting through that door? I then draw them all outside by standing on this car, then run back in and finally finish it off. And it turns out the juggernaut didn't appreciate that. You! Bastard! I knew he was going to. The car explodes, but I know where there's another. But first, I gotta grab some fuel from this pump I searched earlier. Obviously, being careful to avoid the angry fat fucker. Just down the road, I find a cargo van, which I spotted from the top of that cell tower. Unfortunately, it didn't have anything in the boot, but to be fair, I think we've been pretty lucky with our loot drops so far. I then decide to pay a visit to a wandering trader. And my god, am I glad I did. She's got a play cure! This might actually be doable. I also purchased the three medikits she's packing. Chat, this could be the run. This 
could be the run. I then travel to the nearby auto shop to collect a repair kit, then head back to the scene of our dead friends, as one of them has a coffee on him. But first I've got to take on a feral, very poorly apparently. I obviously managed to kill it, but I hope no one sneezes in my general direction. I thought I might have a drop kick. I haven't. I haven't got drop kick. I then search the cannon fodder's corpse, taking the coffee and empty stormbreaker. I haven't got any 762 ammo at the moment, but you never know when you might come across them. There's also a rare weapons case just down by here, and surprisingly I actually find something useful. I know I don't mean the pentazine, the big juicy caveman club. I'll be able to do some serious fucking damage with this thing. Really don't know what to do about the car, do I get it? I think I had stuff in there, so I think I need to pop back there. I don't know how valuable that impaler is, see? But maybe I don't repair it, maybe I just buy another one, because I've got the influence. I think that might be the better way, because influence I can get quite easily, but repair kits are going to be very valuable. I park up around the corner from the petrol station so the juggernaut doesn't destroy another vehicle. I repair the van, then sneak back to the impaler to collect its loot. And now I'm pretty stacked with 9mm and 22 ammo. And with the northwest chunk of Trumbull Valley cleared, I've got to decide on my next move. And this is where things are going to get controversial. I make my way north towards the mountains to introduce myself to Dr. Hoffman. She asks if I'd collect some super expensive computer parts, and I'm like, yeah, sure, I can do that. But she obviously doesn't trust me because she wants Mickey Wilkerson to come along with me. And let me tell you now, this man is an absolute beast. I completely ignore his quest for a computer part, and instead just crack on to the play cards. And the strat here is to let him distract the hordes while I focus on the play cards. We get the phase and I roly poly out of the room, still a fingernail away from infection. And with Mickey still distracting the majority of the hordes, I go back in and get off the second phase. Just gonna take a second. I do have the stim still active, but Mickey's fighting away. Good on Mickey. And with that second pass, I drop back in and finish off the play card, still without getting infected. You know what? I might actually just be the greatest. I lead the hordes directly to Mickey, so I can go in and loot the play card pretty safely. 1022, a fuel bomb and some stims. Pretty decent. I've also been breaking apart every fuel resource I come across, as doing so gives you an extra molly or two. Now I just need to repeat that another 20 odd times. And you know what? Why not start with this gun shop? I get two of the three phases done with the club, then as Mickey leads the hordes towards me, I drop a molly. Great work, Mickey. That's what we call teamwork. One last heavy hit and the heart blows. And I still haven't caught chlamydia, but thanks for the loot, I'll put it to great use. And seeing as Mickey has done a fantastic job clearing the hordes, I have plenty of time to loot the gun shop. But I only need one shotgun, so I take the ammo and the one that carries the most shells. And after that, our van is well and truly packed with some delicious loot. Let's crack on to our next player cart. What an absolute prick. I get ready to fight the thing, but I think Mickey keeps him distracted. So I crack on with the play cart, completing the first phase, then proving I'm a team player, save Mickey from the feral, then the second phase, jog around a bit, and finally the third. And I still haven't had to use a cure. I then get in the van and take off, temporarily abandoning Mickey. Thankfully, he's able to catch up and we take off. And with the Lake Tanner portion of the map cleared, we head south. Also, I can climb another tall ladder. This is the gameplay experience. There's three hearts around Spencer's mill, and I decide to kick things off at the petrol station on the north side of town. I let my boy Mickey deal with the hordes, while I show off why I'm the greatest player this game has ever seen. No, oh, no! God damn it! That's one cure down, two more remaining. Thankfully, with Mickey kicking ass, that causes plenty of distraction, so I can run around and get the first phase sorted. And I make sure to drop a molly on my way out. I then creep around the side, and with the gas is dissipated, I can get the second phase with one swing of the club. Right, wait for it to- oh my god. There's a zombie- how did he fall from the roof? Did you see that shit? What the fuck? Don't know why we're so high pitched. I then take down the play cart, and have plenty time to loot it. Okay, I'll take the bullets, take them, and I'll open that up. While not fantastic, I do get a little bit of additional ammo. Then for the second time today, I abandon Mickey. Honestly, that man is an absolute legend. I then clear out the remaining two play carts in Spencer's mill, using Mickey as a distraction to keep the hordes off me. And you'll probably notice I've used up the coffee. But unfortunately, I've got play cart gases in my lungs. But I found a medi kit in the last play cart, and I still have two remaining from the medical trader. But before I use it, I decide to scope out the next play cart. And unfortunately, it's in one of the most awkward spawns possible. So I take the medi kit and try to lose the hordes by a little jog. I beat it with the club until it phases, then drop a molly on it before throwing myself out the window. This is actually a very OP strat. Is it a strat or is it cheating? I don't know. Either way, I'm sure someone will let me know in the comment section, but whatever, that's another player card taken care of. When shit calms down, I take a second to count how many hearts we've taken down so far. And so far, we've taken down 12. I then promote Dean to leader, so he can keep a closer eye on how many play guts there are to take down. My next play card is in a medical tent. Let's hope Mickey doesn't mind a breeze. And fair play to him, he tries to play 
play fisticuffs, but nothing beats a bit of old-fashioned gunpowder. Sweet dreams, you fucking crackhead. And with him taking care of our focus, turns to the play cart. And with Mickey by my side, this shit was a breeze. And slowly but surely, we get closer and closer to Marshall. But we have two more play carts before we get there. I take both down with no issues using my caveman club, but now my coffee has expired. Not great as you head into the most dangerous part of Trumbull Valley. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Marshall. Also, I think Mickey glitched and fell under the map or something, because he's nowhere to be found. This really could be where our run ends. But if I've got to go out, I'm going to go out on my own terms. I climb another cell tower be because apparently that's my new thing, and find free play carts on the eastern side of Trumbull. And for the second challenge in a row, I get the broken heart curveball. I might just be the jammiest bastard on this game, but for now, let's just focus on Marshall. And just when I thought I was on my own, an angel ascends the ladder. An angel we need, but most likely don't deserve. Although I do once again abandon him, although this time I'm literally just around the corner. Ignoring the hordes breathing down my neck, I enter the building silently, and stamp on the faces of the two knobheads inside. I then beat it with the caveman club, and drop a double frag before having to clean up the only dead guy who's decided to come after me. Bish bash bosh, this play cart is history. And this time I decide not to abandon my MVP. Our next stop is a house, and I accidentally drop a fuel bomb on myself. Oh no, no, no! Okay, well we just waste a fuel bomb. Quite valuable then. I get a couple of hits on the heart, but it seems Mickey's not doing his job properly. So I dodge my way out of the room and drop a molotov behind me, before throwing myself through the window and creeping through the back door. There's still two zombies about, but with the right timing I can hit the heart and keep the zombies off me. That completes the first phase, and then I drop out. I then almost throw myself directly into the centre of the horde, which isn't a great survival instinct, especially as a large portion of them stop munching on Mickey and follow me. So I lead them back to him, and then I can finish the heart with no distractions. And I get another fuel bomb for my efforts. That certainly makes up for the one I wasted like two minutes ago. I let Mickey know I'm ready to leave by, well, leaving. Thankfully he catches up and we move on. Time for another heart in a house. I smash in the front door, drop a roly poly and get a couple of hits off before having to escape out the back door. I then run around the outside through a window and complete the phase. Dropping a molly behind me as I leave out the back door. That means phase two is only one hit and I once again don't leave until I drop a molly. I hear them all banging at the back door so I open it then close it to knock them down. Then couple more hits and adios play cart. Thank you for your loot you stinking pile of flesh. I even have time to top off the van's fuel and sort out my inventory a bit. And there's only one more play cart on this side of Marshall, so let's get to it. I managed to complete the first phase with my heavy club, but my infection meter is getting dangerously high. And I don't even want to talk about my fatigue right now. I'm fully reliant on the caffeine coursing through my veins. Shout out to Rafe Energy, use code JTALBERT at checkout for 10% off. I try going for the second phase, but get smacked up. How I didn't get infected there, I have no idea, but take my club to your skull, you bastard. One more hit phases it, but now a feral's decided to join the fun. Fuck it hell. Jump through the window, you prick. I shoot it from the van because I'm a massive pussy. And with crackheads no longer a threat, I'm able to complete the heart. And with half a Marshall cleared, I decide to move on to the broken heart. But not before I see a new takedown animation. What the fuck? I've never seen that in my life. I was just trying to hop over the wall. But you really gotta respect that full extension. That's a dive even Neymar would be proud of. Mickey hops in the van and we take off. And with only nine hearts remaining, we arrive at the site for the broken heart. I know I've said heart a lot this video. Maybe we should come up with a new nickname for them in the comment section. The broken heart is weaker, only taking two swings to phase it. It also doesn't call zombies to its aid when you attack it. Also, zombies in its plague zone are much slower. So when you think about it, it's basically a free play card. So how is it that I still managed to get infected while taking it off? Oh no! Shit! One play cure left. One play cure to survive eight play cards. Let's fucking go. I repair the van, pop a medikit and head back into Marshall. And this is where things start to go wrong for Mickey. Typically, this heart is in the bathroom I hate. That combined with an overpop populated house is almost certainly a recipe for disaster. Despite that, I complete the first phase with the zombies just lurking in the doorway. I'm just grateful I didn't get stuck again trying to leave this bathroom. I even managed to get a molly off, which should do quite well with thinning out those hordes. I know that's Mickey's job, but what can I say? I'm a team player. Then, seen as I've built up a small arsenal of ammunition, I finished the second phase from the roof of the van. Mickey's doing fantastic, man. Shout out Mickey, he's the MVP of this run. And with Mickey distracting the hordes, I finished the heart with my heavy club. In fact, he's so busy with a horde he doesn't even have chance to jump in the van. But that's alright, the next heart is only around the corner, and he's got a set of legs on him, why don't you walk, you lazy fucker? I'm sorry, that was a childhood flashback. Let's crack on with the play cart. You'll notice I've parked a little bit away from the heart, 
Well, that's so I can use my explosives and not have to worry about my van safety. I complete the first phase with the club, climb onto the van and lob a pipe bomb. And then we finish the job off with a stonebreaker. No idea where Mickey is, but I do take out a blood feral. Now, there's at least one more hidden play cart in Marshall. But before we get to that, I've got a play cart I need to loot. And without Mickey here to distract them, I've got to lead them on a wild goose chase. And would you look at that? What a rare sight. Me creeping about in the long grass. God, where's Mickey, chap? Starting to worry about him. He's the only reason we got this far. <laughs> I then creep into the unfinished house and loot the player cart, mainly swapping out my club for that double bit axe. Then with Mickey still nowhere to be seen, and my stamina severely fatigued, I climb another tall ladder. But this is where I have to make a heartbreaking decision. I don't know if you'll be able to tell with the video compression, but I was getting some serious performance issues. Not like that, you dirty bastards. And in order to try and rectify them, I try exiting the game. But that means when I spawn back in, Mickey's mission has been cancelled, and you'll never be seen again. So it looks like I'm on my own from here on out. We have one final play cart left in Marshall, and it's in this swine and bovine. But there's an espresso stand across the road, and I really need some coffee. It's probably stupid to search containers with a horde chasing me, but you know, it's kind of what we do here. I do manage to lose the horde by leading them on another wild goose chase, but all I'm rewarded with for my efforts are some pissing snacks. So back to the play cart, and I'm sticking with my usual strat of going for the first phase with my melee weapon. But unfortunately, the building's more heavily populated than I'm comfortable with, and I can also hear the distant groans of a juggernaut. And if he turns on my van in the same way the last one we faced turned on the impaler, we are well and truly screwed. So it looks like this just turned into a mini speed run. I smash my way through the second phase and by some miracle still haven't got any infection. But I'm probably suffering from heart palpitations from the amount of caffeine I've consumed. And I'm really trying to stay in the restaurant to keep the juggernaut away from my van. I eventually get the win with my bare palms. And this time I'm not bothering with looting, I'm just getting in the van and getting the fuck out. Our next play cart is a exactly where Mickey's mission would have led us, and that makes me miss the big oaf even more. So I go for a cheese strap which I've managed to work before, but on this occasion everyone wants to jump through the window, which is fine when it's just one or two, but not so much when there's an entire horde. I retreat onto the van, but the angle I'm at I can't shoot the heart. I also can't move it because the hordes would latch onto the front and destroy the van. I need a different play. I tried to lure the hordes away, but I didn't realise a blood foul has joined the party. But I'm not risking this entire run on my ego, get wrecked you bitch. And surprisingly from this destroyed pickup, I can actually shoot the heart, although I can't finish it off before I run out of ammo. So I go back to my melee assault, but it seems I hadn't done as much damage as I thought with my Stormbreaker. So instead I jump back into the van and pull away before anyone can jump on my bonnet, or hood if you're American. I then slam it into a caravan and run inside, obviously making sure to close the door behind me. And thankfully I have the strongest palms in the world. And just like that we only have four hearts remaining, and I have the perfect plan for dealing with two of them. First I head back to our starting point to collect the mark. Agra, but not before taking our most valuable loot out the back of the van. I go with my shotgun as my primary, seeing as I got a ton of shells to use up. I also store the first aid kits, vector and ammo in the boot of the Maragra. Thankfully I also had a spare fuel can, but the same couldn't be said for a toolkit. So I guess I'll just have to be extremely careful. Anyway, the reason I went with this car is because it perfectly fit in this gap, and now I can batter the heart with no zombies coming near me. So this is basically a formality. I take the mollies and break open the fuel resource, then top the car up with some petrol. And there's one more play cart I can take down in this exact same way. So what else is there to say other than adios? And now there's just two more play carts remaining. But my biggest problem right now is just finding the fuckers. Thankfully someone in chat tells me to check out this area, and they were 100% correct. Although we don't get off to the best start when I jump through the wrong window. And when I find my way into the right room, I get slapped up a bit. But why take the risk when I'm this close to victory? I drop the two frag grenades which completes the first phase, then start blasting with the shotgun, sprinkled with a little bit of molotov fire, before finally being finished off with my pistol. And now I just need to find the last heart. But don't work hard, I work smarter. The radio finds me the location of the last heart, but before we make our way there, there's another heart I need to loot. Oh, yes, 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 we'll take that, thank you very much. Now let's make our way to the final heart, and as we make that off-road journey through farmland, I can't help but feel a little sadness. Dean could be about to complete yet another challenge on his own some. So let's make this victory a special one. For Ryan, for Woodward, for Suggy, for Cannon Fodders 1 and 2, but most importantly for our boy Mickey, for which this challenge wouldn't have been possible without. Thank you Mickey and thank you for watching. With an arsenal of bullets at my disposal, I finished the final heart from the roof of the car. Yes! Fucking done it! Oh! Long live Dean the Great, the unburned and slayer of play carts, the destroyer of cars, the myth amongst men, the zombie slaying John Wick. Never has there been a greater character in State of Decay 2. Thank you so much for watching, like, subscribe and good night.